All right, in this video, I want to talk about identifying a trig function from its graph. So maybe we can figure out sort of which equation, uh, you know, maybe we can produce equation here, an equation that would best describe the given graph. So, um, you know, we've got this trig function, and again, just assume, you know, it continues this pattern. You know, we can't graph it forever and ever and ever. Uh, but it keeps going and going and going um, and repeating itself. So we're trying to think, you know, of, you know, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, sine, cosine, what does this graph look like? Um, well, okay, so to me it's definitely not a sine or cosine graph. Uh, it definitely looks most like a secant or cosecant graph to me. So, um, remember if you graph cosine x, remember cosine of 0 is 1. So I'm actually going to graph cosine x here first. Cosine of x is 1. Um, it hits the x-axis at negative pi over 2 and also at pi over 2. And then, let's see, there's pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So maybe we'll kind of graph a little bit over here. Um, so here we're at positive 1, we would be at negative 1. So just a quick little sketch of uh, cosine here. It goes back up. And then it's back at positive 1 um, when you're back at 2 pi. So remember, to get the graph of, um, of secant, uh, so secant again is 1 over cosine so secant is defined to be just 1 over cosine and remember the graph of secant wherever cosine is 0 that's where you get asymptotes okay so we're gonna get asymptotes here at negative pi over 2 positive pi over 2 3 pi over 2 and what we have to do, um, again, if you remember the graph, secant just kind of comes off the top of it and off the bottom of it. And again, it's trapped between those same, or it's trapped between those asymptotes. So we'll get another little portion of the graph over here. Uh, we would get another little portion of the graph coming up here. And again, it just repeats itself. So in the blue, we have a secant x. Hopefully that shows up fairly well. Okay, well. If we go back to our original graph, to me, uh, this is pretty close to secant x, right? I mean, it's got the, uh, the asymptotes are occurring in the same place. You still have asymptotes at pi over 2, and this should be here a negative pi over 2. Well, our new graph has asymptotes at the same place, pi over 2, and also at negative pi over 2. So the period hasn't been changed at all. So I think my new graph still has something to do then with just plain old secant x. But notice what's happened. Instead of uh, starting at positive 1 and going up, it's actually sort of starting at negative 3 and going down. Well, so the amplitude, well, we really shouldn't talk about the amplitude. Um, if you talk about the amplitude of cosine, the amplitude of cosine is 1. If we had changed the amplitude of cosine to 3, um, you know, our, our secant x graph would now be starting at positive 3 and uh, d you know sort of starting at negative 3 when it goes down. So we're doing a couple things. To me it looks like we're taking our secant x graph and we're reflecting it. So to me, to reflect the graph, that tells me we need a negative. But if we just did negative secant x, um, instead of starting at positive 1, we'd be starting down here at negative 1. But again, that doesn't start me at the correct sort of y value. I think if we use negative 3 secant of x, though, that will do everything that we want. It'll take this original portion, you know, for example, this little top portion. The negative will reflect it about the x-axis. And then again, if you multiply it by 3, it's just multiplying the original y values by 3. And that would, hey, in fact, make it start at negative 3, and then it would just go down. Um, same thing over here. It's starting at positive 3 and going up. So to me, this looks uh, most like the graph y equals negative 3 secant 